Do you know how many of these markers I had to milk to fill this ink well? None, because I got this at Michael's. Anyway, roll that awesome intro. Today we are taking a look at the Ecoline Watercolor Ink Black 700. Now, I have taken a look at their markers before, and I actually quite enjoyed them. So I thought, you know what, why don't I take a look at the ink directly? I have been on this ink kick, and I did enjoy the last watercolor inks we used. So I thought, you know what, let's just dig in. I will say I do like the inkwell because it looks very nice. As you can see, it comes with a little symbol of what you can use it in your warnings. Very simple, but I do like it. And on top of that, it has an eyedropper, which this is one of the few times that I actually think a eyedropper would be really good. Normally I'm against them, but for something like this, definitely gonna need it. Normally when we do our tests, I actually break out the Batman sketchbook. But for watercolors, I think we're gonna do something a little different. I have another piece of Bristol board right here, and I even have a little palette that we're gonna use to mix some water in. And then we're gonna try this piece out because I'm really excited to see how this ink's gonna hold up. I really enjoyed their markers. It was a fun, very different experience, and I learned a lot from doing that in my previous watercolor artwork. So I'm really excited to try some new stuff with this one. All right, let's get our ink, our water. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put a layer of water down on our Bristol board, and then we'll introduce the ink and see how that goes. Oh, that's cool. That is cool, I like that. It's not true black, it does streak easily, but it's watercolor, I'm not too mad. I really wanna know what this is gonna be like in a dip pen. Oh, that's cool how it shakes. Very nice. That's actually not bad at all. Um, it's not hugging the nib as much, so my lines are much shorter, but that does make it easier to clean. These brush pens use brush nibs. So you can't really get as fine lines as I would like, at least consistently. So what I really like about this inkwell is the fact that, hey, you can use a dip pen and get as fine lines as you want. Being able to do these cool effects, like I'm gonna pull straight from the inkwell. That's just cool. I think that looks awesome. I think there's a lot of stuff we can do with this. So I think I'm gonna take advantage of this more so than I have done in the past. And the illustration that I'm gonna do, so let me show you that. So this illustration was done in blue pencil, so it should be easier to ink on top of. Illustrated a knight just kind of walking in the forest. So I'm gonna make these trees on the outside pitch black. I'm gonna do the outline of him using the dip pen and then I'm going to try and fill them in with some water and then take advantage of the chaotic effect of the actual ink itself. Roll that super time lapse! And thus began my experience. Now, yes, I did forget to hit start on my camera so you missed the line work, but it just used a normal dip pen so don't worry about it. This was a piece that really was challenging for me. I had to take advantage of the watercolor artwork in different ways, and the only way that I knew how to was through basic watercolor training. And I quickly learned that watercolor does what watercolor does. It is something that is chaotic and just does its thing. So after doing the line work, I filled the silhouette with water, and I quickly learned that that was a mistake because it rehydrated the line work and then created the effect. I was going for that, but it did it in a way that I didn't like, and I kind of tried to fill it in and fix it, but everything went south super quick. I still love how the piece came out, but I quickly learned that watercolor is chaos. And to me, I actually find beauty in chaos. I kind of find what ink and watercolor does on its own, that chaos and that weird, like, just movement is beautiful. I don't know what that says to me as a person, but I kind of like stuff like that. So I took advantage of it. After the thing went sideways, I just went full hardcore in and indulged in the chaos. Even just straight up picking up the piece and letting it drip on my little towel thing, taking advantage and rehydrating everything. I want this thing to look chaotic and muddy as possible. And I think I succeeded. I just kept doing with it, added some more blacks, created some more contrast. I just let it do its thing, just adding to it. Then after that, I just wait for it to dry, went in with some white ink, and added the finishing touches to complete the transformation because this thing really changed, but you're gonna love what it becomes.
And we're done, guys. I really enjoyed how this piece came out. Now, no, it was originally supposed to be a night in a haunted forest, but due to my experience watercolor, it quickly became more abstract. I decided to take advantage of this, and instead of making this a night, this is instead Wrath's first host. For those of you who don't know, Wrath is my original character that originally was my spider Venom Sona, but quickly became his own character. This is Raph's first host from the medieval times. He's already been incorporated into the indie comic that I'm currently working on, so I can't wait to release that. I love how this piece came out. It was a ton of fun to do. Now, this ink is something special, and I have to say that Ecoline easily makes my favorite watercolor ink. However, I think the inkwell is the best way to experience their ink. The markers are nice and all, but the inkwell comes with an eyedropper, which helps you fill up your own markers or your own equipment, but the ability to use a dip pen, multiple brushes, and just overall have more control over the ink and its usage, and incorporate them into your normal style of inking, I think this is where the inkwell is really good, and where I think their ink shines best. Now my scale for the Ecoline watercolor ink is going to be a number 9. And that's a solid 9 too. Now my scale is 1 to 10, and 10 and 9 have very specific meanings and reasons to why I would rate something that high. 10 becomes my new favorite art supplies. If it's something I really enjoy that much, it becomes a 10. Only art supplies I've rated a solid 10 is the FW Acrylic Ink. It is that good. Number 9, however, is reserved for art supplies that may not be my favorite art supplies, but it's something that I enjoy using so much or is very different. I want to learn more of, incorporate more into my artwork, or on top of that, learn to master it. That, in my opinion, deserves a number 9. But I would love to know what your guys' opinions are. Do you guys enjoy the ink? Do you guys enjoy the process of watercolor ink? Have you used it before? All that normal jazz I ask. On top of that, let me know what you guys think of the artwork. As always, this will be available on my art station account for a one dollar digital download and something special is that there will be two versions of this available one with the white outline and one without like the video if you enjoyed it subscribe to the channel for more art and animation based content and remember i'm jrod of battle Productions and i draw power in my own soul